Hello all, in this video let's discuss about one of the most important diseases that affects rice plants across the world and that's the blast disease of rice. This disease has extensive distribution and extreme destructiveness. It has been always an important and uh, disease and a threat to the economy wherever rice is grown. In fact, there have been failures of entire rice fields due, directly due to rice blast epidemics. Now, this rice blast is so important that it it has also been uh, you know the or pathogen has been the first pathogenic plant pathogenic fungus whose genome sequence has been released to the public because. Every kind of understanding, every kind of disease management strategy and technique has been utilized to control this disease in the rice fields across the world. This disease usually affects or kills plants in the seedling stage itself. But if the pathogen strikes the plants in their later growth stages, then it decreases the leaf area for the grain fill, which leads to decreased yield of the plants. There have been several names for this disease. For example, this disease is also known as the neck blast disease or it is called, also called as the rice rotten neck disease or you might have heard of many other such names, rice seedling blight disease, blast of rice. There are several names that have been attributed for this particular disease. So what we will be looking at is the causal organism, we will talk about the organism, then we will look at the symptoms of the disease, the disease cycle and finally some of the important disease management measures. The causal organism is a fungus belonging to the group Ascomycota. It belongs to the order Magnapothales and family Magnapothaceae. The anamorphic stage of this fungus, that is the asexual stage of the fungus, is known as Pyricularia or Rhizae. And the sexual stage or the teleomorphic stage of the fungus is known as Magnaporthae or Rhizae or in some references you might also find as Magnaporthae griseae. This organism does not usually form sexual stage in the field. That is a sexual stage or the teleomorphic stage has rarely been found or noted in the field. It's usually found in the labs. What we normally find in the field is the anamorphic stage of the fungus that is the pyricularia or rhizae. Now this organism is belonging to the group ascomycete. So it forms ascospores as the asexual, as the sexual spores. That is its main identifying feature. If you see on the agar, it gives this type of fleecy greyish colony and under the microscope you can see its uh, spores in the form of a spindle shape or a fusiform shape. The mycelium is septate and haploid. The asexual spores are known as conidia which are formed on conidiophores. So conidiophores are the reproductive hypha or the reproductive stalks which bear conidia at its tip. The conidia itself is three cell or it has two septa and these conidiophores and conidia arise from the center of the lesions on the rice plant. The sexual spores are known as ascospores. They are held in sacs called as acai which are bound in a fruiting body called as the perithecium. The organism is heterothallic in nature that is the male and the female fungus are found or as different individuals or they are found on different hyphae. When there is sexual reproduction that is noticed or when the sexual reproduction does occur, it results in the formation of high line fusiform shaped ascospores. Fusiform shaped is a spindle shape with tapering ends. So it forms these spindle shaped ascospores with three septa. Now this organism is found everywhere in the world but it thrives best under tropical conditions. It thrives best when there is warm temperature and high amount of moisture. In fact, it has been uh, seen that the severity is more with respect to the young leaf, young stem or the rice seedlings. These are the ones which are most susceptible to this disease. So the spores of this organism overwinter or you can say that they get through the harsh environmental conditions and either the sp spores or the mycelia. When I say spores, I am mainly talking about the conidia because like I said earlier, ascospores and the sexual reproduction is not commonly seen in the field. So the conidia and the mycelia have the ability to overwinter that is get through the harsh environmental conditions and then when they land on a susceptible plant the disease cycle starts. Now the conidia are provided with a sticky mucilage that mucilage helps them to adhere to the surface of a plant to the surface of a young seedling or a, a rice plant. Once it adheres onto the surface of the plant it the spore germinates and forms the germ tube at the end of the germ tube, there is a melanized appressorium that is formed. Now, you can see the appressorium over here in a better picture, in a more uh, clearer picture. So, the 
Melanized aprosorium is a structure that has very high turgor pressure that helps in penetration into the cell. So from this aprosorium, there is an infection peg or a penetration peg that is formed that can penetrate the tissue. So the melanization of the aprosorium is one of the main features that helps the organism to penetrate the plant cell. Once the infection peg or the penetration peg penetrates the tissue of the plant cell, Inside, it forms the, uh, it, it, you know, the hypha is formed, the infection hypha grows and it forms the structure, it forms the invasive hypha that are present in the cell. Now, this disease lesion, this leads to the formation of lesions. So, the disease lesion is usually seen four days after inoculation. That is, the fungus grows very rapidly and it is able to complete the, its, its life cycle very quickly in one particular plant. That's why it is able to spread from one plant to the other. Not only that, in the same growing season, it can have multiple infection cycles. So, it can spread from one plant to the other several number of times. Now, this once it has grown over here, as you can see, in the lesion, we have the conidia and the conidiophore. The conidia are then disseminated by the wind. They go and land on a new plant and the cycle repeats. This is the disease cycle for pyricularia or rhizae. This leads to very typical symptoms of lesions. Now, lesions are these kind of structures that you, these kind of marks or spots that you see. These lesions are white or grayish green in color. They usually have a dark green border around them. Sometimes the lesions may also be reddish brown as you can see in the picture. So, the varied color of lesions is there. Usually, it is in the in the in the you know ashy center spots you can see that the spots whatever color their border might be usually in the center they are ashy gray in nature the older lesions even have necrotic borders necrotic borders are those which are the dead borders the the cells start dying and that is that is called as necrosis so the older lesions will have necrotic borders but the common feature characteristic feature that you can see amongst all the lesions is that the lesions are spindle shaped or they are elliptical in nature and they are, that is they are pointed at both the ends. So, these are some of the typical lesions that we can see on the leaf. We can see it on the node of the plants. We can see it on the neck of the plants, on the collar, on different parts of the plant, aerial parts of the plant. These lesions can be noticed. This leads to the severe blasting of rice panicles as you can see over here. This is again neck rot symptoms or neck blast symptoms where the neck has been the the uh, you know the neck of the plant has got rotten it has this is one of the most destructive stages of the uh, disease and this is emerging because of the infected collar so based on which part of the rice plant it is affecting usually the names also keep changing it is called as collar rot it is called as neck blast etc now the main disease management measures are the use of resistant varieties like i said the genome of this fungus has been uh, released it has been completely sequenced and much research has been done on how we can come up with resistant varieties varieties which are resistant to this pathogen we also have a lot of cultural strategies that are employed like rotation crop rotation or avoiding the use of nitrogenous fertilizers because it has been seen that those fields where there is an overuse of nitrogenous fertilizers in such fields the presence of the pathogen or the presence of this disease is very common using the correct water levels or optimum water levels where there is under irrigation it has been seized, seen that the disease prevalence is more we also have the use of chemical fungicides but then these are not very effective they are only effective up to a certain level so these fungicides can be either applied on the seed before we sow them in the soil or we can have foliage spray that is spraying on the leaves but chemical fungicides have not been able to control the disease much or to that extent as cultural strategies and resistant varieties have helped us out. So, these are the different control measures, the symptoms, the disease cycle and the causal organism of blast disease of rice. I hope this video was useful to all of you. Thank you.